Jet Select, Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner is a New York Jet! Waggy Sauce Gardner. I love Sauce. I love his tape. I love his press technique. I love his confidence. He has everything you want to see in the position. And I think Robert Sala in this scheme is the perfect. It's it's a hand in glove fit for him, man. Garrett Wilson. It's Garrett Wilson. The New York Jets have just got two big time playmakers. I believe that Garrett Wilson is going to be the most impactful rookie receiver mm. in this class. And I think we see Zach Wilson play like he did the last six games of the year, times 10, and have a phenomenal second season. Wow, you think- yeah! 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 Let's go, man! Johnson! Brees Hall, running back, Iowa State. Brees Hall, oh my God, they got him! They won offense. They went with the best running back in the draft. Jeremy Rucker, oh my God. The Long Island native is a New York Jet. Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. Today, we had the New York Jets going into training camp. The veterans have reported. The guy Beckett is coming to prove all the doubters wrong. We're hearing reports this morning that Makai Beckton has been impressing the Jets coaching staff. The nutritionist posted something about him. And we see a picture of our own, of our guy, our franchise tackle, big ticket, Makai Beckton, out here to prove all the naysayers wrong. Everybody that's been doubting this man. Oh, he's 400 pounds. Oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. This man is here, and he is going to dominate if he stays on the field, man. I am so excited to talk Jets with you guys in today's live stream. We got a lot to break down. Training camp is officially here. Tomorrow is the first practice. Today is where they come and do some conditioning tests. Some players will speak to the media today, so we get to hear some from players. Man, oh man, it's been a long, long wait for this moment to finally be back, to finally be talking about our beloved New York football Jets, baby. So shout out to everybody tuning in on the chat. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Hope you guys are having a fantastic summer, and I'm just really excited that um, we can finally talk about this Jets football team, man, because it's been it's been a long time. Charles, a great member of the channel. What's good, my man? How you doing, Charles? Hope you're doing well. Shout out to everybody that's tuning into the chat. King Blaze, Snowball, uh, Louis, Keen, Ninja Dude, NY Sports 14. Let's go, baby. Make sure you guys do me a favor. Hit that like button on your way into the show. If you're watching this on Twitter, welcome. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. We got a a really uh, interesting show today to talk about the New York Jets and what we can expect from training camp. Um, I got a lot of fun things to say, my man. I got a lot of fun things to say. So again, guys, shout out to everybody in the chat. If you guys can do me a gigantic favor. If you did not already, make sure you smash that thumbs up button for your boys. We get as many Jets fans and as many NFL fans in here to talk about our New York Jets. Now, let's get right into it, everybody. Let's get right into it, all right? Is that good with you guys or what? I'm a little amped up this morning. Got coffee, ready to go, talking about our football Jets. Now, if you guys follow me on Twitter, on my Jets Twitter account, you guys noticed I've been tweeting about this team a little off more than off uh, more than usual because they're consuming my mind. Only thing I'm thinking about is holy crap, this Jets team is going to be so much fun this year if everything goes our way in terms of just staying healthy and living up to the potential. Right, this season I think Jets fans can all agree that. It has a chance to be something special. It really, really does. Not special meaning like Super Bowl or anything, but you guys know. I feel like Jets fans have a good understanding that this might be the year when we're back on the map. And it all starts today. It all starts with training camp. It all starts with the practices. 
staying healthy, understanding the schemes, getting that chemistry, understanding each other's, um, you know, positives and negatives on the field, off the field. Richie, I don't know who's more pumped, me or you. Jets football is back. Hell yeah, Anthony. Let's go, baby. Let's go. So there's a lot of things to look forward to when it comes to training camp. Um, and we have, we have to talk about this real quick before we get into all that stuff because I felt like this is funny. Not only does uh, Big Ticket look a little different, but we have a new hairstyle from our boy Braxton hunting up Berrios. Looking like Slim Shady out there. What do you guys think of Braxton's new haircut? I think this is awesome. New look for Braxton. Getting a new contract with the New York Jets coming here to prove that he's more than just a kick returner, more than just a gadget guy. He's going to be a wide receiver for this Jets team that's going to be very impactful. And I'm really excited to talk about all these different players. So when it comes to, you know, what to look out for in training camp, obviously the, the biggest narrative is going to be, you know, who's going to win that left tackle spot between Beckton and Fant. That's going to be a big one. Are there any other sleepers that's going to rise? Yes, there's going to be a ton of them. Um, you know, Jason Pinnock, I think, is a very big sleeper to keep an eye on in training camp. Um, there's a lot of guys that's going to be making their name heard in training camp. We're going to finally get to see the running backs this year uh, in training camp. Because remember, in OTAs and minicamp, you know, there's not really, uh, there's no trench work, right? There's really no run game to really simulate. It's all pass. It's all 7-on-7, seven seven, sometime 11-on-11. 11 11, and you can't really get a good understanding of the running backs until training camp. So we're going to finally get to see Brees Hall. We're going to see Michael Carter in year two. We're going to see all the entire running back room. We're going to see the offensive line go to work. We're going to see the tight ends out there with pads, blocking. We're going to see a lot of fun things in training camp. And oh my goodness. Also, is, is there anybody in this chat looking to go to training camp on Saturday, but don't have any tickets? Because I'm doing a training camp ticket giveaway. I have extra tickets in case anybody was unable to get those tickets. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the chat. And I'll let you know how you can enter for a chance to win tickets for Jets Training Camp Saturday. Your boy Richie will be there. You know that already. I will be there. Dude. I don't think people understand how important it is for how important Makai Becton is to be looking like this because there's so many naysayers, so many people that's, you know, doubting him and he's a bum, he's overrated. Like, dude, I don't think people remember the type of player this man was as a rookie. Like, what he did as a rookie was unbelievable. And last year was a fluke injury that unfortunately had to shut him down for the entire season. If Makai Becton can get healthy, which he is right now, stay healthy, and play, this Jets offense is going to be unbelievable in terms of potential. Because it all starts at the trenches. We know what the Jets have playmakers-wise. Probably the best playmakers on paper the Jets have ever had in my lifetime, especially when it comes to the youth and the future. And then on top of that, we have a young quarterback in Zach Wilson who's entering year number two. So there's a lot of things to be excited about. A lot of things to be giddy about as Jets fans. A lot of things to be excited about for the New York Jets. This is going to be pretty, pretty crazy when you think about all these different things that's coming out about the New York Jets on paper. We got my guy TD Finstock in the chat. What's good, TD? Representing the Dolphins in the chat. Hope you're doing well, my man. Hope all is well with you, TD. I'm excited to talk some football with you, Dan, and Matt and Master whenever we uh, kick things back off on the AFC East Roundtable. Woo-wee! Man, this is a good good day, baby. This is a good day. You want to know why this is a good day? Because we finally get to see our Jets our Jets players report. And just, I'm staring at this picture of Makai. You can see it in his eyes. He's out there ready to prove all the doubters wrong. The only thing that's holding this man back is being on the field. If he's on the field, dude, I don't think we understand this man's potential. Please do not forget what Makai Becton did as a rookie. He went up against Aaron Donald as a rookie and absolutely destroyed him on a play at the line of scrimmage that ended up being a touchdown. He went up against Nick Bosa on the edge, held his ground as a rookie. He went up against Joey Bosa as an edge, held his ground. Makai Becton as a rookie, he wasn't perfect like any rookie tackle in the NFL, but he showed potential to be one of the best tackles in the NFL as a rookie. It's just unfortunate for him. Remember last year, 
he had that injury and people forgot about him. People are like, oh, wow, he's done. And then George Fant slid in there and had that great season. So, listen, I think Mekhi Becton has every single chance to win that left tackle spot. But I do think that uh, it's more likely that George Fant's going to win it. More kudos to George Fant rather than anything bad about Mekhi Becton, if that makes any sense. Because what George Fant did at that left tackle position last year, especially protecting the quarterback and Zach Wilson, was unbelievable. I mean, it was perfect. And I don't think we can expect George Fant to replicate what he did last year because that's how good his season was at tackle. So now you have George Fant, the veteran, and you have Makai Beckton entering year number three, technically year two, because last year it kind of feels like a redshirt year for him when he didn't get to play all season long. So, and then add on to Elijah Vera Tucker entering year number two. Add a Pro Bowl guard of Lincoln Tomlinson to this offensive line. And then add a center who's been in this system been on this Jets team going into year number three with the squad and Connor McGovern. Now, Connor McGovern is definitely not a center that, you know, we're super, super excited about, but he's a seasoned vet. He's going into year number two. He's not a scrub. He's a he's a good player, a very solid average uh, center in this uh, league that's going to help this dynamic of the New York Jets offensive line. Because remember, what did Joe Douglas do when he came to the New York Jets? His first offseason, he completely revamped the offensive line in his first offseason, brought in five new starters in one offseason. He drafted Mekhi Becton. He signed George Fant. He signed Connor McGovern. He signed Greg Van Roden, who's now gone. He signed Alex Lewis. And that was an entire brand new offensive line. And then you fast forward to today. You see what George Fant did. Joe Douglas does not get enough credit for that signing of George Fant. Connor McGovern is a decent signing as well. I know that he's not an outwardly, you know, top center in the NFL. But what he's done with the Jets is be reliable, be a vet, and do his thing. So Joe Douglas has done his job. He revamped this offensive line. And then what else did Joe Douglas do? He didn't just revamp this offensive line. He got playmakers, baby. The playmakers on the New York Jets is unbelievable on paper. On paper, this is ridiculous. I can't stop thinking about the potential of this New York Jets running game first and foremost with the best running back in the entire NFL draft class in Brees Hall, adding with the guy last year who had a really good rookie campaign of Michael Carter. Last year, we saw Elijah Moore as a rookie take a big stride. And what does Joe Douglas do? Oh, let's get one of the best, if not the best wide receiver in the draft class in Garrett Wilson. And let's retain Braxton Berrios, our gadget wide receiver. And we still have Corey Davis, the veteran. We have Denzel Mims entering year number three. And then what else did Joey D do? He revamped the entire tight end position in one offseason. He got two big-time season veterans. Now, they're not the tight ends that, that's going to get the headlines. And, you know, people around the NFL are not going to look at Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzama and think they're going to be these outwardly Travis Kelsey, George Kittle type of tight ends. But us Jets fans, we understand how important the tight end position is for the system. We also understand how bad that position has been for a long, long time. So if you add in a guy in Tyler Conklin, who's entering the prime of his career, coming off a season with the Minnesota Vikings last year, when he was asked to be the tight end number one, had zero drops, 61 catches, and entering the prime of his career at 25 years old. And then you add in CJ Uzama, who went to the Super Bowl with the Cincinnati Bengals, going to bring that culture, going to bring that veteran leadership to this young uh, offense. Zach Wilson, man, it's all on you, dog. It really is. Not saying that he needs to be Mahomes, not saying he needs to be Herbert or Burrow or any of these, you know, top quarterbacks in the NFL. Zach Wilson needs to be a top 15, top 17 quarterback right now, this season. When you're the second overall pick, you had the rookie season where you have the benefit of the doubt. Rookie head coach, rookie offensive coordinator, rookie everything. All right, Zach, we expect you to struggle. We're not expecting him to struggle anymore. He's going to have bad games, but... The big thing with Zach that we all want to see as Jets fans is consistency, being able to learn from his mistakes, not repeating the same mistakes, have a couple games where he wins the game single-handedly, have a couple of games where he's putting up numbers where you're like, wow, this is why he's the second overall pick. Because it's not like we drafted Zach, you know, around two or three or four in the draft. Like he's the second overall pick. So the expectations should be high. Every, all Jets fans are going to be looking at Zach and expecting him to show promise that why he's the second overall pick and why he could be our franchise quarterback. Because I also think that the New York Jets fans understand that Zach Wilson has every single physical trait you'd want in a modern-day NFL quarterback. That's honestly 
not debatable in my opinion. I think that's a fact. Maybe it's an opinion to some people, but listen, what Zach Wilson possesses physically with his arm, being able to throw the ball 60, 70 yards down the field with ease, having the athleticism to, you know, uh, make people miss behind the line of scrimmage. He has the escapability factor where the play breaks down. He can ball out. He jukes people out uh, in the pocket. Great pocket awareness, can roll to the right, roll to the left, make throws on the run, make throws this way. Like physically, he's gifted. Now, what's going to make or break Zach Wilson in the NFL that really makes or breaks any quarterback in the NFL is up here. Is Zach Wilson going to be able to process things quickly? Is he going to be able to read the defenses properly? Is he going to have the timing with his teammates? Is he going to know where the football needs to go? Is he going to be able to look off defenders and throw the ball to the right? Does he have that clutch gene? Those are all the questions that Jets fans are looking for. Those are all the things that Jets fans are trying to see if Zach Wilson is the guy. Because we've been waiting for a franchise quarterback for who knows how long. And I also think that this is the first time in my lifetime as a Jets fan that this is... We're going into a season where we cannot say any excuses about a poor quarterback play. When it was Sam Darnold, he didn't have the offensive line. He didn't have the, the coaches. He didn't have the playmakers. Geno Smith, you know, not saying those quarterbacks are good, right? They weren't good quarterbacks, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. Those quarterbacks weren't really set up to succeed. Zach Wilson, he's being set up to succeed which is music to our ears as Jets fans. We've been begging that. And for those of you guys that have been watching my channel for a while, what did I say going into this offseason that I wanted Joe Douglas to do, number one? I wanted Joe Douglas to spoil Zach Wilson to the point where he walks onto the football field on Sundays and looks at his teammates around him, looks at, looks at his offensive weapons, and he feels overwhelmed. He feels spoiled with the weapons. He doesn't know where to go with the football because there's so many good players around him. And that's exactly what Joe Douglas did. You bring in the best wide receiver in the NFL draft. You revamp the tight end room. You give him a Pro Bowl left guard on the offensive line. You give him the best running back in the draft. How the hell did Joe Douglas do this? I have no idea. <laughs> like, Think of it this way. The three big-time additions to this offense, the best wide receiver in the NFL draft in Garrett Wilson, the best running back in the NFL draft in Brees Hall, the best offensive line on the market in Lincoln Tomlinson, who's a pro bowler, who's going to benefit this offensive line way more than we can all expect. Those three additions alone are ridiculous. And it doesn't even include the tight end position that we revamped. It doesn't even include Elijah Moore entering year number two, Michael Carter entering year number two, Elijah Vera Tucker entering year number two on this offense. Man, oh man, this offense has so much potential. And you know who's a huge X factor for this offense? That man. Big ticket Makai Becton is a big time X factor for this offense because if he's on the field and he is playing anything close to what he did as a rookie and he is this good in shape, which it seems like he's ready to absolutely maul people in the trenches. Guys, there's a lot of teams out there that goes from last to first. Now, I'm not going to sit here with a straight face and say I'm expecting the Jets to win the division, but... There's a lot of teams that go from four wins to double-digit wins. And all I'm saying is on paper, the Jets really did a phenomenal job this offseason, man. Joe Douglas did his job. Now it's up to the coaching staff to put it all together and the players to live up to their potential, man. As you can see, I'm hyped up this morning. As you can see, your boy is hyped up this morning right now because training camp is finally here. Oh, -wee! how are you guys feeling though? Let's get into the chat. Any questions you guys may have, anything you guys want to talk about, let me know because I feel like I just went on a complete like rant, a positive rant of how pumped up I am for this Jets team, bro. Because for those of you guys that don't know, um, I use I'm also a YouTuber for the New York Knicks, so. I have I have been totally immersed in the Knicks this offseason, reporting about the whole Donovan Mitchell situation. The offseason with the Knicks is on full go. So I've just been full on like Knicks mode. And obviously the Jets, there's nothing happening. So the past couple of weeks, I've just been thinking about the Knicks, not as much about the Jets because, you know, training camp wasn't starting yet. 
And now that training camp's back, my mind is back into the Jets world, baby. Just thinking about, whoa, this team, what they did. It's just coming back to me like, whoa, this Jets squad on paper. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The sports narrative asks, how do you see the wide receiver position shaking out? The wide receiver position is going to be very fun this year because it's going to be spread around. There's not going to be, I think Elijah Moore is going to have the most production. Um, but I also don't think it's going to be like Elijah Moore is the bona fide number one receiver. I think it's going to be spread evenly. I think Elijah could could scratch a thousand yards if he stays healthy. Garrett Wilson right behind him with like 900, 800 yards. Corey Davis, 800 yards around. I really, and then don't sleep on my man Braxton Berrios, please. I'm putting him on the screen. This man... Braxton Berrios is going to be way more involved in this Jets offense than people are expecting. He's not just going to be a kick returner. He's not just going to be a slot guy. He's going to be on the field a lot. He's going he's gonna to take over Jamison Crowder's role from last year, the starting slot receiver, if I had to guess. I think it's going to be a rotation. We're going to have Corey on the outside, Elijah on the outside, Garrett on the inside, even uh, Braxton, all four of those receivers on the field at once on some packages. Like Braxton Berrios was such an underrated signing or re-signing rather for this Jets squad. So underrated, man. His chemistry for, with the Jets, his chemistry with Zach Wilson, I mean, at the end of that season. When Zach Wilson had his best games at the end of that rookie year, it was with Braxton as his number one. That was because Elijah Moore and Corey were injured. So this wide receiver position is going to be fun. And the best part about it, it's not like a receiver room that's kind of like a little flash in the pan of success. It's not like, all right, we'll be good this year, but what do, what's the move next year for this receiver room? Dude, all these guys are under contract until next season. Garrett Wilson, rookie. Elijah Moore, year number two. Braxton Berrios, we have two more years with him. Corey Davis, we have two more years with Corey. I know that we can get out of his contract after this year, but there's no reason why people should root for that to happen. We want Corey to ball out this year. We want to have Corey back next year. Because if we have Corey back next year, what does that mean? That means he balled. That means the offense clicked. So this Jets receiver room, whoo! Now it's not a finished product, but the really fun thing about it is I have such high expectations for Elijah Moore entering year number two. And then we forget about the, the talent that Garrett Wilson possesses. Like, Garrett Wilson has... Now, listen, don't quote me on this. Excuse me, don't quote me on this. But Garrett Wilson has potential to be a Justin Jefferson, to be a Jamar Chase, to be a Devontae Smith, to be a Jalen Waddle in this offense as a rookie. There's always a rookie receiver that gets drafted in the first round. Or is he, I saw someone compare him to CeeDee Lamb. There's always a rookie receiver every year that doesn't look like a rookie receiver. And I think Garrett Wilson possesses every single quality that checks off about that exact situation. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Vino, who's an under-the-radar guy that could step up to be a stud by the end of the season? I think first name that came to my mind is Quincy Williams. I think a lot of people are underrating Quincy Williams, his first opportunity to have a full offseason underneath his belt with the scheme, understanding the coaches now, going to be starting next to CJ. I think he has a chance to really step up and be a, be a household name on this team long term. For show. Sure. For show. Sure. Um, any other questions in the chat, please let me know. Quincy will be a beast. Hell yeah. G-Dub is going to come out day one and be a stud. I'm calling it now. Guys, too much potential. It will translate well into the NFL. <sighs> I couldn't agree more. Just got here. Any new picks of Becton? Yeah. So this is the only pick we really have of Beckton um, from this morning. I don't know if there's a new one, but how can you not be excited to see our, our boy like that, huh? 
All right, guys. So we're going to open this up to a Jets Q&A. Super Chats come first. If you send in a Super Chat, a donation to the channel, I'll be greatly appreciated. And you guys get to cut the line and get to talk about the Jets. So you guys have any questions regarding the Jets, any questions regarding the Jets going into um, training camp, you let me know. And we'll be talking about it. So I really feel like um, with Mekhi Becton showing up to camp in this good shape, mm, such a good sign. Charles, love your Becton jersey in the background, Richie. Thank you, man. I had to put that up. I've been the Becton guy since the beginning. I've been defending him all offseason, not listening to all the crazy reports about this and that and that. I'm just going to wait till training camp to prove what the actual narrative is. And now let's see it. Why not put Nazardeen back at free safety? Um, I don't know. I feel like they got Pinnock out there at free safety, and, and they're really trying to translate Nazardeen into a linebacker. Um, because in this system right here, if you can get athletic, lanky linebackers that can patrol the middle of the field, that's what's really going to take this defense to another level. Um, so I feel like Nazardeen, you don't want to mess with him as a rookie he translates into a linebacker and then a year or two we're going to put him back at safety you got to have continuity with him so i appreciate the donation the jet show really means a lot to the channel my man does pinnock make the transition this year yeah he's a safety he is going to be a guy that's competing for that starting safety job i think he's going to try to uh beat out lamarcus joiner um i don't know if he's going to win it out but i do think he's going to flash in camp a ton amari what's good my man welcome to the stream hope you're doing well bro Let's go, Richie. Let's go, Aunt Jets 82. Big Ticket is back. You already know, Jersey dude. You already know. The Jets have a setback on offense because Michael Floor hasn't learned from his mistakes and goes overboard with the playbook. How do you know he hasn't learned from his mistakes? <laughs> Where'd you get this information from? I don't get it. Well, Michael Floor should be the one guy that you're not concerned about. What are your expectations for the defense? Great question, Adam. Um, the defense, I'm expecting improvement. I'm not expecting them to be a top 10, top 15 D in the league. But the one thing that I'm expecting is to finally, and I mean finally, get pass rush. Get to the quarterback consistently. Because without the pass rush, there is not going to be any type of success on this defense. Now, the secondary is going to help. With the addition of Sauce and DJ Reed and Whitehead, those guys are really going to help out this secondary and this defense as a whole. But with Carl Lawson returning, Jermaine Johnson being added, Jacob Martin being added, Vinny Curry coming back, JFM, you know, these, these boys are going to be going after the quarterback consistently, and that's what's really going to make or break this defense. So the expectation isn't for them to take over the league as a defense, but I'm expecting them to be drastically improved. If we stay healthy. And I think Jermaine and Carl are going to be big reasons for that. There you go, Adam. Jermaine and Carl will solve that problem. Agreed. Becton going to be serving up pancakes every Sunday in a Thursday night special order. <laughs> I love that. Hell yeah. Who do you think the most slept on Jets player is right now? Great question. Um, Honestly... Garrett Wilson is not is not being talked about enough, in my opinion. And listen, I know that he's a rookie. He hasn't really showed anything. But I feel like when it comes to rookie hype, all the hype's around Brees Hall, which is rightfully so, because that man's going to be a, a dog as a rookie. But it, it's kind of like no one's really thinking about how much potential Garrett really has. Another person I think is Tyler Conklin. Um, I think Tyler Conklin is going to be an absolute beast in this offense. And also, you got to throw a Michael Carter. I mean, on offense, Michael Carter is being slept on so much because of the addition to Brees Hall. Everyone's expecting like Hall to be the number one guy and getting all the carries. It's not going to happen. Carter is going to get the ball a lot. And if Carter stays healthy all 17 games, he's going to put up more better numbers in his rookie campaign, even with uh, splitting carries with Hall. Um, and also, I mean, my biggest sleeper for this entire team that I already touched on this year I mean, this stream is this man, Braxton Berrios. I cannot stress enough how important it was to re-sign this man. 
This is this is one of the biggest slept slept on players on the entire roster. All pro kick returner, chemistry with Zach Wilson, reliable, reliable on third down, great high IQ, just great culture guy, Braxton. And you want to talk about underrated players on defense? Um, you know, Michael Carter the second, I think, has a chance to really become a, a household name at that slot. And um, that's another underrated piece. How about Corey Davis? Corey Davis, I think, is going to have a really good season this year for a multitude of reasons. Last year, he was thrown into the position of being the number one option because we didn't really have any other uh, guy on the roster to be a number one, right? We're not going to put the burden on Elijah Moore as a rookie to be a number one. We're not going to expect, you know, Braxton Berrios or Jameson Crowder or Keelan Cole to be number ones or Denzel. So Corey Davis was thrown into the fire as a veteran last year, and Zach was force feeding him the ball early. Now, Corey Davis entering year number two with the system, you add Garrett Wilson, you have Elijah entering year number two. It's only going to benefit Corey Davis. It's going to open things up for him. No one's going to be bracketing him. No one's going to be double teaming him because if they double team him, good luck. Good luck with the other weapons around him. Like, it is kind of crazy that the Jets legitimately have three receivers that have a 1,000-yard potential. Now, I'm not saying that they're all three of them going to get a 1,000 yards. It's very unrealistic. It's not going to happen. Because, number one, all three of them have to be healthy, which is rare. But they all have the ability to have a 1,000 yards. You feel? Richie, why I liked the Corey Davis signing last year, he's really more of a number two receiver than a number one. Exactly. Which is why I feel like he's going to ball out this year. Last year, he was thrown into the number one position role, and he's not a true number one, which is why we saw him struggle a little bit. Now, he's going to be technically number two, number three, and that's why he's going to play really good. His best season in his career was next to A.J. Brown, where he just almost got 1,000 yards. Muttfields with a $10 super chat. I appreciate the donation, my man. Hope you're doing well, brother. Hope your summer's doing well. Does Brees Hall crack 1,200 rushing yards, and who would you draft from the Jets in fantasy football this year, if any? Go Jets. I'm actually going to be making a video on um, which Jets players um, we should consider drafting in fantasy football and which we should stay away from. So stay tuned for that. But the only thing that's going to hold Brees Hall back from getting this number is an injury. If he plays 17 games, I would bet that he gets 1,200 plus yards. And yes, I would draft Brees Hall. I want Brees Hall so bad in fantasy because the value is ridiculous. He's going in the third round. In the first round, if you can get a, a running back or a top receiver, like this is my goal in fantasy football, is getting a running back in round one like a Dalvin Cook or a Camara or a Henry or someone. I have picked number eight, so one of those guys. And then round two, get a top receiver. And then round three, get Brees Hall. Mm. Yes. Uh, when it comes to other players in fantasy, dude, Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson are going like in round nine. Dude, get Elijah Moore. I'm telling you guys, get Elijah Moore. And also, Tyler Conklin, he's going undrafted. If you're in a deep league and you want a backup tight end, I would I would take a flyer on Conklin as a backup tight end in case he really uh, breaks free. Um, but yeah, Hall is definitely going to be a guy that's going to be drafted third in the third round. And I wouldn't be shocked. Next year's fantasy, he's going to be going the first round or the front part of the second round. But again, Mutt Beals, I appreciate the donation, man. It means a lot to the channel. How many TDs will Zach throw this year? He's going to throw 25 plus. What do you think of the new Black Panther trailer? I thought it was great. Anybody see the movie Nope? By any chance? I'm a big Jordan Peele guy. Also a big film guy, if anybody didn't know that already. Brees Hall's on my list to draft. Going to be a big sleeper steal this year, regardless of how the Jets do overall facts. Conklin's going to have a career year. Couldn't agree more, man. Playback Carter, Richie, can Braxton Berrios be like Julian Edelman type of player for the Jets? 100%. That's why I feel like um, people need to start talking about Braxton Berrios a little more. Like he has that Julian Edelman, that Danny Amendola, that those, that vibe, man, he has it. Who get the starting running back, Carter or Hall? 
I think Hall's going to be the starter, but I don't think that that's going to impact Carter. I think they're both going to be getting the ball a lot. Can we trust McGovern at center for a consistent season? Also, who's going to be number three running back, Ty Johnson or Coleman? Hopefully, it's Ty. I think we can trust McGovern, man. Listen, we're not asking McGovern to be the anchor of the offensive line. We're not asking him to be a top five center in the NFL. All McGovern needs to do is be the communicator, be a veteran, which he is, have a good chemistry with Zach, which he does. This is his second year with him. And I think having McGovern, who is a, a, an average center in, on this offensive line, honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if the Jets extend him. Like, at all. I think the Jets coaching staff loves Connor McGovern. They love his leadership. Now, I know he's the worst player on this offensive line, but it's not like he's a bum. It's just that the offensive line is pretty much so good outside of him. And I think that... um. Coleman's probably going to be number three. Um, even though I would like to have Ty Johnson because of the, the, the youth. But when Tevin Coleman's name was called last year, he was really, really good. He was really good. 49er Media, 184 in here and in 99 likes. Hit the like button, guys. Help me out. Let's get to 100 likes. Who wants to be the 100th like of the stream? Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button for your boy. We greatly appreciate everybody. We really do appreciate it. That D-line room is full. Hopefully, JD can trade instead of cut. There will be cuts. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some people that get that has to move on from, uh, whether that's Rankins, whether that's Shepard, whether that's... I mean, damn, it's a deep, 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 deep unit. Do you see a scenario where we have two running backs rushing for 1,000? How excited would that be, bro? That would be sick, but I don't see that happening. Um... I think that the Jets have a chance to have, um, they could both have around like 2,000 to 2,500 yards at the line of scrimmage combined. Phil, I think that this Jets running back tandem, dude, this is like, like we have a chance to be one of the best running back tandems in the NFL this year. Maybe not this year, but for the future. We have Carter for the next three seasons. We have Hall for the next four seasons. We don't need to get a running back ever again. <laughs> I think we're still going to draft the running back next year because Joe Douglas, that's what he does. He's going to keep having those fresh legs come in in the draft. But, hmm. Do you see Bryce Hall having a big role in the defense? I'd like to see what he can do in the slot. I doubt that happens, though. Yeah, I mean, listen. I am one of the biggest Bryce Hall fans that you will find. Um, and it kind of hurts that he's not going to be playing this year. Um, I was the guy that was like saying, we don't need to get a corner this year. Bryce Hall is the guy. And then I can't complain because we get DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner, which you can say are definitely upgrades. But it's crazy. That's called depth, right? There's nothing wrong with having depth. We're deep out of position. This team is known to get hurt. So if Bryce Hall, his name is called, I got all the hype in him. Now, the big question is, are the Jets going to use him in any packages if Sauce and DJ are healthy? Now, that's a good question, right? On any packages, is he going to be in, in the slot? Is he going to be lining in, at, um, I don't know, in a nickel package? We'll see. We need another pass rusher? I feel like the pass rushers are stacked right now, bro. Can Michael Carter, the corner, break out and become a league best nickel corner? Or is that a pipe dream? It's not a pipe dream. But I will, I'll, I will like slow down on the best in the league. I would say he can put his name in the best young upcoming slot corners in the NFL. I really believe that. And someone asked me earlier, who is the, uh, some underrated players that are being slept on? And Michael Carter the second was a guy that I brought up because he's going to be the only guy from the draft class last year that's going to be starting as a rookie on the defensive side of the ball. He is. You know, they love running that package with Michael Carter the second in the slot, two corners, which is going to be Sauce and DJ, two linebackers, which will be CJ Mosley and Quincy Williams, two safeties, four defensive linemen. That's their go to package. And I feel like Michael Carter the second is going to be a big time improvement this year, man. Big time improvement. Hold on. We got to get Big Ticket back on the screen because I just, yeah, there he is. We need to draft the center and one or two linebackers this draft. Don't worry about the draft next year, King Blaze. Trust me. 
I my goal this year, guys, is to not talk about the 2023 draft at all during the season. Like literally not once. If I hear anything about the Jets losing for a pick, who we looking at next year, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm just being straight, I'm just being brutally honest with you guys. <laughs> I just don't want to hear about anything to do with that stuff because it's been every year i'm always like i don't want to lose for picks i want to win i want to win now in december i want to win i want to be in the playoffs i want to be in the hunt for the playoffs even if we don't make the playoffs i still want to be winning in december joe douglas has proved to be a, a gm that can get value wherever the, wherever the jets land in the draft and it is going to stink too, though, that this is the first draft that we're not going to have like a plethora of capital, like multiple firsts, multiple seconds. But it is it is what it is. Finally, we have a good problem, such as depth, right? How nuts. Nah, dude, Barrios is my crush. You can't steal my crush away from me. <laughs> as soon as week one ends, someone get, goes live, people will be like, we need a new... Yeah, man, I mean, the overreactors are going to happen. It's just the reality of being a, a fan of this team. Beckton looks fantastic. Oh my God, he looks fantastic. I mean, look at him. Look at those arms. Look at his, like, you can just tell, bro, he's in the shape that we need. Bold prediction from the Jet Show. Coach Brick is going to be praised this year. The first couple of games, our defense looked decent without Carl Lawson. This is, I'm really happy you brought this up because people forget last year that the offense was abysmal and the defense was gr maybe not great. The defense was really good in the first three or four weeks of the season. I guess the Panthers, we were in that game until the end because of the defense. The offense couldn't do anything. Week number two against the Patriots, our home opener, the defense was unbelievable at first. We, we sacked Mac Jones. We kept getting the ball for Zach, and Zach obviously had that atrocious rookie performance. And I think that if we had a decent offensive game that game, we could have won. Um, the defense, to start off the season, was playing hard, playing physical, playing with tenacity. Um, so I do feel like the defense is going to come out, if healthy, and really look like a different squad. I love your guys' new helmets. Thank you, man. I love them, too. Yeah, man, I'm going to the opener, and I'm going to uh, week five on Jets Media Day. Becton is going to ball out and prove all the haters wrong. Let him know, LT. Let him know. If Becton plays well and in shape, the beat will take credit. A minus holes. Oh, A holes. <laughs> I said A minus holes. <laughs> R&R, you're right, though. You're right. Prediction on how many division wins we will get. Now, this is the biggest narrative that's going to be surrounding this Jets team this season is our how we compete in the division. First of all, we need to win one. <laughs> We haven't won a division game in two seasons. So minimum two wins. Minimum. We need to beat the Dolphins, beat the Patriots. If we don't beat the Bills, if we get swept by them, okay. We have to beat the Bills. I mean, excuse me. We have to beat the Dolphins once. We have to beat the Patriots once. If we get swept by the Bills, I can accept that. As long as we're competitive. That's really what I want to see, man. I'm not expecting three and three, four and two, sweeping the division. Unrealistic stuff right there. The reality is the only way we close a gap in this division and look like a team that's trending in the right direction is being competitive in our own division. And we start off the season against an entire division in the AFC North. And then after that, we get we get a home game against our first AFC East opponent. And that being the Miami Dolphins. Hopefully we're picking last in the draft next year. That'll be sick. If Beckton stays healthy, the running game will be outrageous. Dude. Kenneth, like thinking of the, that reality gets me so giddy. You have no idea. Charles, I'm very excited. I'll be at the game tomorrow. Oh my God. So guys, training camp first practice is tomorrow. Um, and I'm really excited. Because... There's so much anticipation, so much hype surrounding this Jets squad. And it feels good that we can finally talk about this team, man. Feels so good. And guys, a little um, heads up. 
for the, those of you guys that are watching this live or on replay, um, I am going away for two weeks starting on this Sunday. So I'm not going to be able to be uh, covering Jets camp as much as I would like. It does pain me. Trust me. It does pain me. But I'm going away on a training for two weeks. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to keep up with everything. So I'm going to try to report as much as I can this week leading up. I'm going to training camp Saturday. So I'm going to be able to give you guys my live uh, perspective on Saturday. But then I'm, I am going to be away for two weeks. But when I come back, that's when it's going to be harder the preseason. That's where we're going to get things ramped up on the Jets media again. And that's where you'll see me all over the place. But don't you guys get it worried. You guys got a lot of coverage around YouTube. You guys can follow. Obviously, you got Jets Central. You got Matt O'Leary. You got Green Bean. You got um, the Buffalo Jet fan. Jet, I mean, there's so many different uh, Jets content creators out there that's going to be covering the Jets camp. So when, if you guys notice, I'm not going to be posting a lot in two weeks. That's the reason. And I'm going to give you guys an update on when that happens uh, to keep an eye on. But I definitely want to let you guys know in case you're wondering, where the hell did Richie go? Why is Richie not talking about the, the training camp? Muffields with another $5 donation. Thank you so much, brother. It means a lot to the channel. Um, how many sacks will JJ this season? And I'm coming for Jets Media Day. When do the tickets get distributed? Your tickets will be distributed this week, bro. Um, I'm just picking out uh, the seating arrangements and stuff. I have all the tickets on my phone. And uh, I'll be sending them out shortly. So stay tuned for that. I think JJ can get seven plus sacks is really my expectation. Um, I don't, can't really expect him to do anything more than that as a rookie, especially with the rotation that we have with Carl Lawson, JFM, Martin, Curry, Clemens. I mean, the rotation is going to be deep. So it's not like JJ is going to be on the field all, um, all game. Um, let me know in the chat, though, guys. Jermaine Johnson, how many sacks do you guys expect him to get as a rookie? Uh, let's hear it. Jermaine Johnson, rookie sack predictions. What's the chat got? Let's check Twitter as well. Is there anything content-wise that I'm missing on Jess Twitter? I see everyone still uh, drooling over Makai Becton, as they should. Oh, Quinton Williams talking to the media first. Let's go. Let's hear what Quinton said first. What did he say? Still married? Someone asked him if he's still married. Quinton Williams is. A... Quinton Williams said the defense has a chance to be spectacular. He said he is not worried about a contract extension. That will work itself out. Yeah, that is a really interesting uh, thing about Quinton Williams that he's entering a contract year. NFL sack record easily, hundred um, percent. So people are saying six sacks for JJ, five sacks. I saw ten sacks, six, twelve, six. All right, I see you guys. But Quinton Williams is a, a really uh, interesting player to talk about because if he, like, breaks into that player that we drafted third overall that we we're expecting, like, don't get me wrong. Quinton Williams is an average to an above average tackle, defensive tackle in the NFL so far. But we can all agree that he still has a, a level to his game that he has not tapped into yet. Now, we know that's possible. We know it's in Quinton. And I think this might be the year. Because what's been missing with Quinton is talent around him. He's been eating up the double teams every single game. He doesn't really have anybody to take pressure off of him. And that's not an excuse for him. It's just a reality of defensive linemen. Not everyone's Aaron Donald. They can eat up deep, uh, double teams every game and still be like on out, like just not even like real. Like, I don't know how you, Aaron Donald does it. But Quinton has shown flashes to, to take on double teams and still be dominant. And now he's a chance with all the additions around him for Quinton, man. I hope that he balls this year. I hope he gets an extension. JJ says with a $5 donation, thank you so much, bro. Great video and chat, man. Great for a diehard Jets fan. Another question is, can Zach Wilson realistically throw for 20 touchdowns and under 10 interceptions? JJ, great question, and I appreciate the $5 super chat, my man. It really does help out the channel a ton. And listen, it's definitely realistic. If you see what Zach Wilson did at the end of the season, he threw five touchdowns, one interception, in like a five game stretch. Now, if he can stretch that over, you know, a full season, you're looking at around, 
you know, 25 touchdowns to 10 interception um, ratio. Now, not saying that's going to happen guaranteed, but the cool thing about Zach Wilson is in college, he wasn't a, a quarterback that was turnover prone. And usually if you're a turnover prone quarterback in college, it kind of translates into the NFL. That being Sam Darnold, remember, he was a guy at USC that was, you know, known to be too aggressive, take too many risks and get a lot of turnovers. And when we drafted him, we knew that Sam Darnold needed to work on that, but it kind of translated to the NFL. Now, Zach Wilson, early in his career with the Jets last year as a rookie, he was a turnover machine. He had a four interception game, but you can't forget that nine of his 11 interceptions that he had last year was all in like a six week span. And then he got those mistakes out of him. And then he really um, learned and understood where to go with the football, started being smart with the ball. So I think 20 plus touchdowns and under 10 interceptions is possible. But even if he has like, for example, say Zach finishes like 27, 28 touchdowns with like 12 picks. I don't think that's a bad thing because I do feel like Zach is going to be really aggressive. I think he's going to try to force the ball into a lot of tight windows. I think he's going to try to experiment a lot. And so I do think that the interceptions are not going to be super down low. Um, but as long as he can have a two to one touchdown interception ratio, that's really all we can look for. You feel me? As Jets fans. Um, Tyler Conklin speaking now. Tyler Conklin says, among other things, Zach Wilson was one of the reasons he wanted to sign with the Jets as he saw him as a talented young quarterback. Cool. Tyler Conklin said he's built some stronger bonds in a couple months with the Jets. Wait. Tyler Conklin said he's built some stronger bonds in a couple months with the Jets than a couple years with the Vikings. Added his, tra added his transition to Minnesota to New York has been smooth because of the locker room. See, that's what I love to see, man. I love hearing that the locker room is... Mm, I love that. Tyler Conklin also said that he's picked George Kittle's brain at tight end university in Nashville on what made him so successful in a style of offense that Michael LaFleur runs, particularly in the run game. Oh, yes, Tyler Conklin. I love to hear this. Picking George Kittle's brain? You kidding me? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, Willie Cologne tweeting that Lincoln Thompson Pro Bowl year. I love that as well. Assume full health. Lawson, 10 and a half sacks. Quinn, eight and a half. JFM, six sacks. JJ, seven sacks. I think you're uh, underrating uh, JFM, in my opinion. I think JFM is going to have a little more than six sacks. Um, but I can't be wrong with this. I mean, I, I mean, I can't. I'm not going to be disappointed with this. If this happens. Guys, can you please do me a favor? Smash that thumbs up button if you're enjoying the stream. 145 likes with 172 people tuning in. So please do me a favor if you did not already. Smash that thumbs up button. I really do mean. It really does mean a lot to the channel. Steven says JJ will get six sacks. He will be limited because the defense will be so good and balanced. It will limit his opportunities. That's a great take, Steven. I agree. And that's okay to have a lot of talent, right? What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Hearing that Tyler Conklin has been picking George Kittle's brain about this. Oh, dude, that is, that is just music to my ears. Expectations for the running back room. I'm super excited about it. I mean, what am I not excited about with this team? I mean, what? I'm trying to ground myself here because my expectations are getting a little too high. Um, the running back room, dude, it's going to be one of the best tandems in terms of youth and in, in future that the Jets have had. Because Brees Hall can take the ball to the end zone whenever he gets the ball. 70 yards, 80 yards, 90 yards, you name it. Carter is that perfect compliment back that can pick up the first down, can never get down after first contact. His ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, both decent pass protectors. The expectation for the running back room this year should be high, especially with the offensive line. Like with Lincoln Tomlinson being a pro bowler, adding to this squad with Makai returning and AVT entering year two, bro. 
Can't stay grounded. We are ready for takeoff. Max. I'm trying to ground myself, but I can't. Steven with a bold take. Clemens will get more sacks than JJ. I don't really see that happening. I think Clemens is going to develop into that guy more than like become a, a rookie star. But uh, we'll see. I mean, I won't be that upset. If that means JJ gets eight and Clemens gets nine, <laughs> I don't see that happening at all. Um, so we're hearing some quotes from the Jets veterans talking to the media today, um, which is cool to see. It's cool to hear that Conklin, a big reason why he came to the Jets is because of Zach Wilson. Quinton Williams says he's in the best shape of his life. It's like you're driving a truck with a boat in the back. Once you drop that boat, man, you're smoother. <laughs> That's a cool analogy. My hot take is the Jets clean sleep rookie of the year award. Breeze on offense, sauce on defense. That's crazy because the Jets honestly have two offensive rookie of the year candidates in Breeze and Garrett Wilson. And they have two defensive player of the year candidates in Sauce and Jermaine Johnson. What a time to be alive. Like, you guys remember going into the 2022 draft saying that the Jets could easily get four impactful starters in the draft. And they did just that. With Sauce, Wilson, Johnson, and Hall. <laughs> Bruh. Highway 77 is back. You already know it. He's back and ready to prove his haysayers wrong. They're quiet today, man. All the doubters of Becton are quiet. Wait, did I just see Riley Reef got signed? Ah. Riley Reef got signed with the Bears. That's a lot of money. $12.5 million. All right. So, a player that, that was linked to the Jets um, is off the market. I wonder if the Jets are going to want to get that death tackle. But hey, best case scenario, we don't sign one, but we don't need one because that means Fant and Becton are healthy and good to go. Right? Mike Girardi quote tweet saying, perhaps Makai Becton has fully received the me message from the coaching staff and management about being in shape. He looks good here. He's one of the most important pieces for the Jets. Yes, he is, bruh. Yes, he is. Prediction for CJ Mosey this year. We have his best season as a Jet. It's going to be hard to top his season last year. Um, he was really good last year individually. Now I think the next step for him is to... Um, help the players around him more and be better in coverage. That's really what we want to see from CJ. If Elijah doesn't hit a thousand this year, it's for one or two reasons. Either he got injured or Zach Wilson did not take a leap. Yeah, I agree. Elijah Moore, most improved player, 1050 plus yards easily. 1300 yards plus. Thoughts on free safety, A. Davis taking a leap. Maybe it becomes a battle between Davis and Pinnock. Yeah, I don't think Davis is going to really see the field unless there's an injury, unless he really uh, shines in camp. Because um, I really feel like this is a make or break year for him entering year three. I'm still trying to figure out what caused those idiots to doubt Beckton. Charles, I wish I could answer this, man. I don't know. If Elijah doesn't it that... Oh, yeah, I already read this. I agree. I think the fan base is... Um, putting too high AF, too high of expectations at the sauce. Yeah, I mean, listen, when you're a corner getting drafted at the fourth overall spot, you're going to have a lot of high expectations. But we have to tame them. He's not going to be perfect as a rookie. Can I get a Jets chan? Of course you can. Ready? Let's go. Everyone follow along. J-E-T-S. Jets. 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 Oh, my God. I cannot wait to do that. On Saturday, I can't. What is one position you think JD should add more depth before the season starts? Maybe not as a starter, but for depth, offensive tackle, and linebacker. Oh my goodness. It feels good to be talking about this Jets team, everybody. It really, 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 really does. Because Makai, 
is back to prove everybody what the vibes are, baby. Revis wasn't even Revis in year one. Facts. All right, guys. So we're going to start wrapping up the stream here. We just hit a one hour. So I'm going to cap it out over here. I appreciate everybody that was tuning into this live stream. Uh, it was a lot of fun talking Jets. Tomorrow is the first practice. So I'll be covering that on the channel tomorrow. Um, I'm really excited about everything regarding this team. As you guys can tell from the stream, I was pretty amped up at the beginning, pretty amped up at the end. Let me know your uh, expectations for training camp. Please, if you're not already, hit that like button on your way out of the show so we can get as many Jets fans watching this channel and the stream. That's really going to wrap up today's stream, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that shows all the support here on, on Jets Media. Shout out to everybody in the chat that's showing all the support. Really does mean a lot to the channel, baby. Let's go, Jets. Let's go. Let's go prove the doubters wrong, baby. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'll catch you.